Okay, guys, I am here with Stephanie O'Day. Stephanie, how are you? I'm great. How are you? You got me dressed this morning, so there's that. <laughs> so Stephanie is on the West Coast, and of course, I'm on the East Coast, so we had a little bit of trying to make sure that we were timing this perfectly. Uh, but, but for those that don't know, Stephanie has the website, a year of slow cooking.com, and she is here to really talk to us all about different branding, and Stephanie is of the same mindset as I am as far as not relying solely on page views because you can't just make your living anymore on just ads. So we're going to kind of talk all about that. One of the questions that I love to ask you is tell us a little bit about your businesses, the different avenues that you have for revenue, things of that nature. Sure. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And um, yeah, I, um, I started the A Year of Slow Cooking site in 2008. And honestly, it was because I needed a job. <laughs> it, it, it was, I, I really did need to find a legitimate way to work from home. A lot of food bloggers have this kind of like poetic story of, oh, I just want to share my love of cooking with the world. And that wasn't me. Um, honestly, I don't actually even like cooking, which is why I use my crock pot. So, um, but at the time I had a 22 month old who was vomiting sporadically and I was teaching preschool. I was lucky that she could come to work with me but she kept getting sick. So I quit on the spot and we live in San Francisco. So that's not an okay thing. <laughs> um, so she's fine now. Um, we figured out that she had um, celiac, which is a gluten intolerance, which of course is totally relevant now, not relevant, but like relatable and everyone has heard of it. But back in 2006, 2007, it was nowhere near as prevalent. So it kind of threw me for a loop. And so I did a lot of research on um, moms working from home. I answered those kind of scammy ads at the back of parenting magazines that you find, and um, I'll save you the trouble. They really are scams. So, um, th so that's sort of how I stumbled into blogging. And I had done research about SEO and a tightly focused niche. I knew I wasn't going to be a traditional mommy blogger in that I wasn't going to discuss diaper contents or post lots and lots and lots of pictures of my kids online. So, so I liked the idea of a recipe site, but honestly, I'm not the best cook, which is why I like my crock pot. I like my slow cooker so much. So uh, after a Christmas party um, and a little bit too much wine, maybe one year, um, in 2007, <laughs> I joked with my husband, I should just start a crock pot site because that's the only thing I know anyway. And, um, and so that is what happened. And in 2008 for a new year's resolution, a year of slow cooking, um, came about. And since then I've have four slow cooker cookbooks. I've got a, um, a household guide on organization for moms and this sort of job. And it's a neat job in that I can work in the wings depending on when the kids are asleep or at school or doing different activities. A lot of it I can do from my phone and I get to connect with real people from all over the world who also like their crops. So um, it's, it's been great. And in this kind of like weird backwards whimsical way, I sort of feel like this is my version of the American dream because I wanted to stay home with my kids. I really did. Um, but I also needed to make some money. <laughs> And I think that's how some of us actually start, you know, some, like you said, start that hobby as far as like that whimsical, poetic way of being able to do it. And then some of us just really dive right into being able to make it into that. And I think it may take some of us a little bit longer to understand that it is a business and we can make an income from that. But when we get to that point, watch out because a lot more. <laughs> It's like our hair is on fire as we come through trying to do this. It definitely is. So now one of the questions I'd love to also ask is what do you find was the toughest thing for you as an online entrepreneur? Because I feel like we deal with so many things. And you did mention how you had contacts all around the world because you were able to have those conversations. But what did you struggle with? I, I think I still struggle with it a bit now. And it's kind of that poser syndrome. Um, and, and that's because I was born in the 70s, so that's the word I use. But I, I feel sometimes like, like, well, who am I? Because why would they come to me? They've got all recipes. They have Martha Stewart. They have all these people. Why on earth would someone trust my chicken crockpot recipe? And, and why would they come to me for organizing advice? And so um, 
I struggle with it. And, and it's something that I kind of have to really think about. And then how I mentor <laughs> newer bloggers is how I end up mentoring myself is that the reason they're coming to you is because you really are a real person. You really do have three kids. You really have been married for a long time <laughs> and, right. and all of this stuff and in your voice. And, and again, I'm talking to other people cause it's weird talking to myself and <laughs> your voice is what they're coming for. Otherwise they will just go to all recipes um, and that type of thing. And so that's what helps keep me grounded is I'm not trying to be real simple magazine. I'm not trying to be Martha Stewart. I'm trying to be your for reals next door neighbor, kind of person who has been there and done that. I really have potty trained three kids. I really have figured out how to handle social media in our house. This is what works for me. It might not work for you, but I'm going to share my story. And, and a lot of times just women in general, we relate back and forth to each other when we're vulnerable and authentic. Um, and, and that's why many of us have canceled all of our magazine subscriptions and turned to blogs. <laughs> Because it is like you see that the magazine and it's beautiful and everything looks picture perfect and, and nothing is out of place. But I think, like you said, our audiences react better when they know that you're a hot mess and you're wearing slippers <laughs> during an interview or your kids are screaming in the background. <laughs> Yeah. In the middle of a podcast or whatever it might be. Um, and that is, it's real life. I think one of the things that right now that recently did really well was that news reporter where his kids came sneaking in and everybody went crazy because it was a guy. But in reality, that's our lives. On a it is. It is. It is. Right. No. And you know, I have my phone muted next to me, but at the same time, if it's a kid calling, we're interrupting because it is what it is. <laughs> No, absolutely. And it is so, yeah. so true. I love that. So now you talked a little bit about the different things that you've been able to do. You have four slow cooker books. Is that what you said? Or I, sure. Yeah. yeah. I have four um, traditionally published ones and then um, some eBooks that I've done on my own. And um, I do have a housekeeping guide for moms and that's traditionally published also. I, I look at the traditionally published books as really, really neat. And it's a way to um, get picked up in the press. And from those opportunities, I've been able to work with some larger brands and do some national television work. Um, but I've got to tell you, the, the actual For Reals money maker comes when you create your own product and sell directly to your email list and to your fans. Um, otherwise, the, the way the cookbooks work is, is I, I was very fortunate and I did get advances. Um, and, I, and it's not something to sneeze at and I, I don't want to um, make it seem like I'm not thankful because that is not the case. But, but the fact is, is, is the publishers take the majority of the income and then you're paid in um, six to months to a year later of what you've sold and of that 15% goes to your literary agent. So for every book you sell that might retail for $19.95, you're really only getting about a dollar. And, and if you sell millions of them, that's fantastic, but that's not the rule anymore. And so if you put out a $9.95 ebook and you're getting everything except for maybe a 1% PayPal fee, that's a no brainer. <laughs> The books, I feel like the traditionally published books give you the authority and be yes. able to have that um, to say that you have your book and that, like you said, it was able to get you further along with the brands, which absolutely, of course, is beneficial, especially when you're looking to diversify your income. Um, so you talked about how you went from the slow cooker books and then you also have the housekeeping book. Now, <laughs> one of the things we always talk about is staying in our lane and branding ourselves. And I think one of the things that you did really Really well as you listen to your audience and you heard that this was something that they, they were looking to have another book that kind of wasn't just slow cookers it kind of went into that time management as far as like housekeeping how did you kind of decide that that was the app the route that you needed to go the path that you should take sure so um as as far as creating the brand that first year I was the Crockpot Lady. I actually didn't even use my name online and I went by the Crockpot Lady. And, um, and then when the cookbooks came out, I needed to be like, okay, my name's Stephanie. Um, but, but the more you 
think about why the Crock-Pot is such a valuable tool for busy families is it's because it saves time. You are already awake in the morning, you're having your coffee, you're, you're getting stuff going, you're packing lunches, throw the chicken in the crock pot with a bottle of barbecue sauce and a chopped onion, and then push the button and you're done. And so the rest of the day, it's cooking while you're doing whatever it is you need to do. And the end of the day, regardless of whether or not you are the best parent in the history of the universe, your kids are cranky at dinner time. And it's really just, it's not safe to be strapping a baby to you and chopping an onion during the witching hour. So really, it is, it's a time saver and it's a sanity saver. And that just sort of pivots into organization because in order to get the crock pot going, you sort of have to already have the ingredients in the house. You need to plan ahead a little bit. So I'm not saying that you need to be uh, Mary Poppins picture perfect, but but just a tiny bit of planning ahead helps. And so from there, um, I, I do have the, it's called Totally Together, Simple Shortcuts to an Organized Life. So that is a daily housekeeping journal. I do also have um, printable um, organization calendars on the site where you don't even have to think about it because I filled in the chores for you. It's Monday, you're gonna do this. It's Wednesday, you're gonna do this. Hey, wait, did you call so-and-so because it's July and you need to check in on the birthday month. So, so that, those type of things. That, that a blank to-do list is overwhelming. <laughs> so that's why I filled in your to-do list. And then from there, it pivots into um, a higher priced life and time management course for moms which is six weeks and self-guided. And, and from the, the monetization standpoint, and when I work with newer bloggers, I talk about having many different ways for your audience to reach you and get to know you and many different price points. Um, so I, I look at it as sort of bookends. So you've got super low price point, and, and if you're a blogger, you already have the lowest because you're giving away stuff online for free anyway. So, so get over that. <laughs> you're already providing value in that way. And, and, and stair step it up. So I have super low price points of um, free and then $325 for a meal plan, $395 for an organization calendar. I have ebooks ranging from $7 um, up to meal plan bundles, which go for about 32. Um, I have blogging mentorship, which is a monthly fee of $17. And then I've got a really high priced life and time management course, which is close to $500. And $500 to someone who just meets me is ridiculous. But if you've been on my list for a while and you know that I practice what I preach and, um, there are some people who just really want that level of hand-holding and support, and I'm happy to offer it to them. Um, I think it would be a little much if you're right out of the gates and you haven't branded yourself and you aren't well-known in the industry to offer a $500 or a $1,500 course um, without the, the stair-stepping. But I do think there is a market, and I also think in this sort of like information overload, what you're providing is the shortcut. So I've already been there, done that. I've already built successful websites. I've already written the books. So I'm happy to show you how, but um, uh, my time is valuable. And so what I'm offering is the shortcut um, in terms of the mentorship and, and that type of thing. Um, I think that right there is what a lot of people get hung up on, especially as a blogger that's going to create a product. They'll say to me or create a course or whatever it might be. I'll get the question, but Jenny, they can go to my site and find this information. I said, but how many searches do they need to do to piecemeal it all together? The purpose of creating a course where you have a product that's higher priced, it is a little bit more, First, it holds them accountable because when people pay for something, they're going to be more apt to do it. Whereas if they don't pay for it, they may not stick to it as much. Oh, I know. How many eBooks, free PDFs do you have on your computer? I, every time I download, I'm like, why do I have so much gigabytes and it's these free books that I've never even read? 
Yes, and you totally forget about them. So by charging, it makes a huge difference. And then the other piece of it is being able to find it all in one place with a plan to follow. And the, the, you know, really explaining to you a lot of the bloggers that this is what you can do and make it easier for your readers. Yet, yes, they can go through and find all of this. It's gonna take them hours trying to search through and connect this article to that article and piecemeal it all together. But having it all in one place is what makes it valuable because it saves them time. And I think out of everyone that I talk to, whether it is a mom that is at home and isn't online at all, um, or if it is someone that is an executive at a bank, that is the biggest issue that people run into is time. They just don't have enough time anymore. I agree with you. And I also would um, piggyback on that, that because there's so much information you take bits and pieces from different people offering advice, but then you never follow through. And it's sort of like when you've got a newborn and you're trying to get them to sleep and you've got 12 different baby books that all say conflicting information. The best thing to do is to pick one person and just follow that advice fully. And, and that's when you have success. Yes, because you can actually see which thing is working and which thing isn't, which I think is a huge issue it's because we have a tendency, especially with social media, to jump from one thing to the next and try to figure out, oh, well, that isn't working, but you've given it a day to try to see if it's going to work or not. And, and what's interesting is um, I was working with this SEO guy and he says, you know, this is just like when you start going to the gym, give it three months, three months. And once I learned that, it's just what a relief. <laughs> you can't expect three months of results in three days. So, so give things time. Yes. And we are such an instantaneous society that we expect those results in those three days, if not in three hours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So tell us more about the mastermind program that you offer mentorship for bloggers, because I know that that's also something that you've kind of added into your basket of ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, I might have a tiny bit of entrepreneurial ADHD, but I'm okay with it because I think in general, um, moms and, and that's who I primarily work with are such born multitaskers that when you deny that part of your personality, it's sort of when you wither away, like I'm okay wearing a whole bunch of different hats because I think that's again, real life. And when the, the sort of business, books that are written by men say, um, lock your door and don't do anything for three hours at a time. That's not realistic. <laughs> right. So, um, I don't like stupid advice made up by businessmen who come home to dinner because I'm the one cooking the dinner for you. So anyway, <laughs> that's me off on a tangent. Um, <laughs> That's fine, no. And it's true, we do, I definitely find, but one of the things, that, even though you have added something else to your basket, I think you've still stayed in your lane though. You kind of like, everything is connected. You went from slow cooker to time management, which is which are definitely connected. And then you are working with moms that are looking to make money like you did online. So it just makes sense. I think you, as much as we say, yes, we're kind of off on different areas <laughs> within our basket, it's still, connects. So I think yeah, for, for me, it, it flows nicely. And it's really interesting when I search someone's email address and I'm like, huh, you're not even on the crockpot email list. That's really interesting to me. <laughs> yeah. um, so as of right now, our, our mastermind group is, is small. I've, I've kept it to about 20, 25 people. And um, it's a recurring um, monthly fee of $17 a month. And I picked 17 because it's 2017. And um, 17 is my uh, wedding date. And so every 17th, my husband and I do, yay, happy anniversary. <laughs> Let's go for a walk around the block and open a bottle of wine. Um, but uh, I was getting lots and lots of questions from new bloggers. And so I sort of compiled all of the questioning and answering into a mommy blogger ebook. And then this, this mastermind, mostly because I didn't want to feel taken advantage of when I was emailing back and forth with people answering their questions. I really do think that um, relationships are important and, and working together in a collaboration is important. Being a mom can be isolating. Starting a brand new business can be isolating. And writing online, even though we're in quote social media in 
it, it, it can be lonely. And um, telling your best friend, oh my gosh, this post just got shared 45 times in the last 10 minutes. Like that's a really big, powerful, pump it up thing. But if you're not speaking the same language to your own tiny circle of friends, you will feel um, just, just sort of, it's depressing and you, and you feel like the air is being sucked out of your balloon. So, so that is what I was, um, I've, I've looked to create. And it's just a small group of women and we're all in it together. I work mostly with brand new bloggers who are uncomfortable asking what they think are stupid questions, but there are no stupid questions. And if I'm able to say, yes, you can write a book proposal. You've got enough information here. This is the book proposal framework that I use and this is what I recommend. Oh, wait, you're gonna take a Facebook ads course? Don't take that one. I know from experience that you really should take this one. So, so that is, is what we're um, creating here. Just a bit of a shortcut. Um, there's a lot of information out there and um, I've been online for, gosh, 10 years. Um, and uh, my friends have as well. And so we're able to sort of filter out and um, uh, filter out the new bright, shiny objects. I always recommend to someone when um, something comes across your email inbox and they're promising you make a hundred grand in the next six weeks. I have the paint by numbers, step-by-step -step exact guide to show you how. Google that person and, and see if that person really has walked their walk or are they making this $100,000 in the six weeks because they're taking money from you and creating this sort of uh, cycle of um, teaching you what I did, which is really just doing the same thing. So you know yeah. what I mean by that. Absolutely. It didn't come out in a very eloquent way. I knew exactly, <laughs> I knew exactly what you're saying because you go on Facebook <laughs> and you run through an ad and it's the first thing that you see. And it's so easy for people that are newer like that to run a Facebook ad campaign, get their information out there and is a shiny object, six figures, ooh, six weeks. Yeah, let's do that. That makes sense. But like you said, if you go and you Google them, do they have the social influence behind it that shows that they've actually done this? They've been in the trenches. They're going to be able to answer the questions that you have. And I love that you know that your, your audience is a newer blogger that's coming with questions they don't feel comfortable maybe asking in a group like that. Um, definitely, I can remember being asked. And that honestly is how my Pitch Perfect Pro started is I was constantly answering questions about working with brands. And right. it just does, it gets overwhelming. And it's, you feel like you're spending your, all of your time just answering those questions. Right. Um, so the teacher and me had to put together something that made it simple and easy for people to be able to find. And I love that you put together something where it's a community and it's about collaboration because it is. And I think a lot of the newer bloggers don't necessarily understand that because they weren't there during the time when it was all about going and writing comments on each other's blogs and we right. all followed each other and we it was about collaboration and community and we shared openly with each other. I think with social media, it's changed. It's different than what it was like probably five, six years ago. I think it's become um, a lot more competitive and not as um, just sort of collaborate -y. Is that a word? Collaborate-y? Um, I, I remember going to like the first few BlogHer events that everyone was so huggy and we were just so excited and, and uh, we were friends. And then fast forward eight years and everyone is like businessy <laughs> and and oh i don't want to talk to so-and-so I, I need to look over their head and talk to that person over there it's like wow so um yeah i i do miss those days but i also think that part of growing is is realizing that change happens and in the beginning days we were focused all on page views and all on ad revenue and rpm and, and cpm which um, is nothing to sneeze about. If, if you have a longstanding blog and you already have a lot of page views, slap up the ads. You might as well get paid passively for that. But if you're a brand new blogger chasing those page views, um, it's a long haul. The, the pool is, is very diluted now. And um, I kind of always joke that um, Gwyneth Paltrow and Kim Kardashian is what sort of broke the internet when it comes to, to banner ads. Because why would a big Fortune 500 company like Coke put an ad on my site when they can put it on Gwyneth Paltrow's site? So, so that's sort of how I look at it in that way.
Yes. And it's the similar perspective because my audience has definitely heard me say time and time again, we cannot chase page views. It's about your audience. Build that audience that knows you, expects to come to you with something very specific. And they will then, which you can clearly see has happened with your audience, go from one product to purchasing the next. They love who you are and what you represent. And because of that, they're willing to buy pretty much anything that you promote. And yeah. it works the same way um, as far as like working with brands. Like if you recommend something, that's why brands are willing to pay for it. They're willing to pay for influence. And right. if you have that audience that respects what you have to say, that's what makes the difference. So I you know, it's, it's interesting because, um, I mean, even if you're just tracking affiliate income and, and links, so I could be writing some sort of cooking post, and then I say something like, make sure you put an apron on because you don't want to get flour or whatever all over your super cute new dress you just got at Old Navy. And then you're looking at your links, that super cute dress you just got at Old Navy got an awful lot of clicks. And that's because you have this relationship with your readers, and they're like, well, I like her. If she has a super cute dress, I'm probably going to think it's super cute too. So even, so a lot of people think, oh, okay, if I am only a slow cooker blogger, I, I can only link to slow cookers or kitchen items. And that's not the case because again, the people are here for my voice or for your voice. Otherwise, if they just wanted a chicken recipe, they'd go to all recipes or, or food.com or something like that. Yes. And it's about the authenticity when you do that. So the example that you just gave is perfect because too often we're going to do others will try to just sell it. Oh, check out this cute little baby dress. But it was the way that it was part of the story, not part of the sales pitch. And I yeah. think that's the difference too many times where people struggle with affiliates or they even struggle with working with brand directly is that they don't understand that it's not a sales pitch. It's just part of your natural story that right. you're bringing it up like you would to a girlfriend and you're telling them about. Right. Let's be honest. I try a product because my sister-in-law recommended it to me right. um, as compared to an ad that I see on the TV. So that yeah. makes a difference. And I think that that's really important that we stay. Yeah. I, I look at the, um, as if affiliates and then working with brands as more like product placement rather than push. And, and there are times that I need to negotiate with a brand over the phone. Like, eh, I'm, I'm going to write my story the way I want to write it. And um, let's give it a try and see how it works. And usually it's much better rather than the name of the company over and over and over again with a little TM. Nobody wants to see the little TM. <laughs> Yes. They want to know the story behind it and still answer a pain point or give them that quality content that they're used to seeing from you. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and my audience knows because they've listened to me preach about this one too many times, probably, I'm sure. Um, so one of the questions that I always love to ask are your projections for 2017? What do you see as being for the rest of the year being kind of up and coming in the industry? In the industry. Interesting. I think going back, um, to roots. I think in general, all of the social media is burning people out and um, feeling like you have to do everything is, um, it's not fun. So I, I think pick something that you're already good at, which chances are is writing and relating to your readers and focus on your email list and writing as if you were a friend and a peer and, and not a sales pitch. Um, and, and getting that sort of rapport going and then just pick one or two social media channels and that's it and, and throw the rest away. Sure. Maybe create the account so nobody steals your brand name, but you don't, don't feel like you have to Instagram 27 times a day. If you hate Instagram, I don't like Instagram. Oh, I get it. You're a yeah. in my <laughs> yeah. I, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't think in pictures. I think in words. So it doesn't. I, I get it, and when I do throw up a picture, people like it, and that should egg me on to do more, but I just, I'm not interested in it. Um, I reserve the right to change my mind, um, but I'm, it just, it's not for me, um, whereas I get it that there's some people who are absolutely killing it on Instagram, and it's their largest traffic generator, and they love it, and I think that's fantastic. Then, if that's true, then they're probably not focusing on LinkedIn or Twitter or in that type of thing. So figure out what works for you and, and, and own it and, and stick with it. And don't feel like you have to do 
everything under the sun just because they tell you you need to. I love that. And I so agree with that because it is, it's burnout. And if you're trying to do five different platforms, you're not going to be able to really excel at one. And if you can excel at one or two right now, then you can start to shift your focus when it just naturally runs on its own. So I love that. That's perfect. All right. So Stephanie, tell everyone the best places to find you. We already said on um, a year of slowcooking.com, sure. where else can they find you either on Facebook or um, sure. Instagram, but Twitter maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am on Instagram. I just don't like it. Um, uh, yeah. So, so my name is Stephanie O'Day and, um, O'Day is O apostrophe capital D E A. I have a homepage at stephanieoday.com and everything's linked there. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help in any way I can, whether or not it's crock potting or, um, life and time management or, um, blogging help for, for newer bloggers. I'm here. I spend most of my day in my, uh, pajama pants and fuzzy slippers um, answering email because honestly the the email and that sort of consumer like like and I don't even think of it as consumer or customers I, I think of them as as readers and in people that I'm connecting with I like to answer my own email and I really do <laughs> so um, I'm happy to to field any questions I think you have um, an opt-in for a cheat sheet of the five steps to um, blogger monetization. And if you sign up for that, you'll end up in um, on the email list for, um, for new bloggers. And if you hit reply to an email um, and ask a question, I will read it and answer back. <laughs> Same with Jenny because I've done it. <laughs> We are going to link right to that cheat sheet so that they can make sure to get that. So that's going to be in the show notes um, so they can make sure to come over and get the cheat sheet. What can they expect as far as it's the five different ways to monetize? Yeah. Um, so, so it's five different ways to monetize your site that has nothing to do with ads or, or increasing your page views. Um, so if you've been on Jenny's list for a while, a lot of it is going to sound familiar. I'm very into building your email list because it really is the only thing you can control and that you own. And even your unsubscribes, you can download the Excel or CSV spreadsheet of your unsubscribes. You can't email them but then you can upload them into Facebook or Instagram and do targeted ads or create a lookalike audience. And that's not black hat. That is total legit. That's the same way if you sign up for, um, if you order, like Christmas is coming. If you order from one Christmas catalog, you're going to get seven more. And that's just how it works. Yes. No, absolutely. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and to share your knowledge with my audience. We so appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course.